And just about the time that everyone else puts their planters away, here we are, bringing ours back out. If, uh, if planting was a race, we would lose. We, we would lose big time. But there's a good reason for us losing the race. And that is because we are planting organic soybeans. This is our one of our organic fields. So this field is half soybeans and it's gonna be half another crop that I haven't told you guys about yet. It's kind of a little surprise, it's coming up sooner or later. But we plant so much later than everyone else for organic stuff for two reasons. One is for weed control. Okay, we wanna let the weeds grow before we take the field cultivator and dig it so that way we can kill more weeds off the bat because obviously if organic, we can't use chemical. And then also we don't want any of our organic crops to cross pollinate with, with any of the surrounding fields. So those are the two reasons why we usually wait two weeks-ish after everyone else is done planting to plant our organic crops. Now in the past, we've always used 15 inch soybeans for, or 15 inch rows for soybeans for the 1790 that I always plant with. However, this year we're going to try it with 30 inch rows. We actually converted the corn planter over to soybeans. So my dad's driving it today, which will be interesting because I don't think he's ever driven it before. But 24 row, 30 inch planter, soybeans, organic. And this is our first year of really doing organic soybeans without putting rye down first. So kind of a lot of firsts here. looking through some of the maps I've noticed this on a couple of different maps it just loses the too bad we aren't using John Deere in this planter we can't reach a stupid button especially the wisdom has a power button back here <laughs> I mean you can probably reroute it somewhere else well they got this box you got to... yeah I'm Precision has done some amazing things in the years with planting. They kind of revolutionized planting into what it is today. However, a brand new Case, Kinsey, John Deere, whatever, versus a brand new Precision, I'm gonna take brand, the other, the stock brand, most, ten, nine out of 10 times. There's a lot of positives to them. Yeah, 2020 has a lot of great things, but the problem is, is that, when it's working and <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not a, so. You're a John Deere. I'm, I'm a John Deere fan. I, I drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> I, I drink the Kool-Aid. But like the other day for, so, um, the demo, John, the John Deere exact commercial drove the other day. Yeah. Had two monitors in it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It had two. It, this was controlled by the monitor. That was controlled by the John Deere monitor. This with the monitor now They're too. doing this with the John Deere monitor now too. Oh, that's good or bad. Down pressure was with the monitor. The row clearance with the monitor. The liquid was with the monitors. Or the same. It was all controlled by one monitor and extended display, which I think is pretty cool because this is a mess. I don't think it's gonna rain anymore, is it? I'm not getting done very fast here. But you only have three more rounds to go. Yeah, but I'm not moving. True. Very true. This is kind of an important map to have too, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Did, it, did you lose it right there too? Yeah. See? I do see. I turned around the other end, I drove my tractor on the other end, and it didn't... I mean, I'm having terrible reception. I guess that's part of it. Still should be recording though. Wait, does it even... Oh, the monitors re... They restarted again? I think we two, three times last time. Huh. This monitor is a long time starting. Shut down and starting. I'm back. I don't know where I went. <laughs> <sighs> I'm back now. Well, worst comes to worst. If... 
the organic people for some reason need proof of a map or something. We have this video. It didn't, right. it, it didn't show us plant right there, but we planted right there. And second time it's done it. Don't know. Do not know. Just restart. It's a pretty common thing in, you know, electronics in general, but especially in ag, if it stops working, restart it. Yeah, Restarting like it doesn't work, cold boot it. It's technical support. Have you been, have you tried unplugging it? <laughs> yes? Okay, have you tried cold booting it? You know what cold booting is? No. So that's where you turn everything off, you unplug everything. You turn the tractor back on, and then you plug everything in back in one by one while the tractor's turned on. It's like a hard reset kind of. Usually the John Deere is they just totally don't plug them while it's running. Yeah, I got a cold boot. You're supposed to turn it off first, then unplug it, then plug it back in when it's turning on, but yeah. Yeah, that isn't supposed to. That must not know we're planning because I can't get it. I can't get a coverage map with the John Deere. Is it, does it supposed to have a coverage map with the uh, precision? Well, I don't know. I just I thought I could even run on the hydraulics and you can. Well, well I mean, it's, is, it's is, turning on and off. Yeah. But isn't the John Deere supposed to be running liquid? Yeah, maybe that's why. Yeah. I think that puts a coverage map down when you do liquid. Which, by the way, I have a USB stick in my pickup. I need to get the liquid maps off that. Okay. Or my, that would explain a lot then. Yeah. When I first started, it was giving me liquid pump warnings for the first few hundred feet. Yeah, and I think it mapped for a little bit, so that would make sense. I guess that, I guess the foot switch turns the, the, the pump on. I thought the switch, I thought the pump was turned on to one of the SCBs, so I wasn't too worried about it. But it must be running off the uh, power beyond. So the power switch turned the pump on and off. I did not know that. There's a little foot switch down there, so you hit that to turn the liquid on and off. So yeah. Otherwise, you've never really planted this planter before, have you? I did a few years ago, but I never had to. We switched it to beans. After quite a bit of trouble, we got it all. Now, well, for some reason, when you see it, you got to flip the master switch on and off a couple times. It's a beautiful monitor. Though. I mean, yeah, I mean, Precision does have nice monitor. Deer can't touch that. No. For some reason. I don't know why they can't. But... Everything you need is right there. That's what's so nice about this. Yeah. I've never seen a Sea Star 4, though, either. So. I think. I'm not hold my breath. Yeah, but I've, I've been told that Sea Star 4 is a lot better than, like, Sea Star 2, which is what we're using. On our bean planter, so yeah. I don't know. But it's a lot better than this, or is it? It's just better than it's that. It's probably just better than that. But that is still very usable in the soybean planter. Yeah, it, it, you got to put your face. Yeah, yeah. But see, but then you get extended monitors. See, then you have two monitors, and you have. You just tell me how you didn't need all these monitors. No, you have two. That's why the tanks here, because that's where the liquid. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Now it's done. Yeah. Stream speed of 4.4 mile hour. So the reason we're going so slow is actually because you can't get the seed can't get to the boxes fast enough. We're planting heavy, but I don't know. Or sorry, 200. Okay. 200. Where I mean that's so 40 percent so, heavier than we normal. So what's the reason for planting organic soybeans so much heavier than normal soybeans? So you got to grow faster, shade faster. Okay. Uh, you you cultivate your. You, you, you can take a few out, call You can take a few out, take a few out dragging, you can take a few out rotary only. Yeah. The biggest thing is to try to get them is heavier beans will grow faster, taller. Okay. So you want to get more. Yeah, more more bean, initial growth. More pushing out there to keep the weeds down. So, for the, those of you guys who do not know, I would say our average population is probably that 140,000 seeds per acre range on soybeans. Um, on my prescription maps that I did this year, I was ranging from usually 120 to 160, and we're doing the whole, we're doing 40 acres here? 80 something. Oh, we're doing 80? Okay. 80 at 200, so. And then all of your viewers can come help us walk beans. <laughs> So, Dad just bumped the speed up a little bit. <laughs> I 
this one back down. So it's chucking uh, beans to those middle rows as fast as it can. I don't know why it's a middle row. You think it'd be you, the? You think it'd be the outer rows? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not supplying beans fast enough to those to those center rows right underneath the tanks there. Yeah, how, how, how fast did you go? You only bumped it up like 0.4 miles per hour. I uh, actually hit it up to six. Or six. Four. Okay, so you're playing at five four now. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I'm just trying to so for plan. Just wondering how fast we could be going. Now 140,000 or what? Yeah. Yeah, it still matches out at seven and a half. Seven for seven and a half. Yeah. Interesting. And last year, in the 50 inch rows, we never could, no matter how slow we went, we could never get it to plant heavy. And I don't think it ever tells why that was. Yeah. This makes more sense than last year did. Because you got twice the rows, you got twice the. Yeah. You're, so when we, had, when we had 15 inch rows. So what do you, okay, when you have 30 inch rows versus 15, if you're planting the same population on a 30 inch row planter each row, the disc is spinning twice as fast in there as a 15 inch planter. Last year in a 15 inch planter, we were trying to plant what, 220? Yeah. And it wasn't even, it couldn't do it, it was like 180. Well, it slow way down and it wouldn't make any Yeah, you could, slow, you could go as slow as you wanted and like 180 is the max it would plant. Which made no sense to us and no one could tell us why. And everybody in here just said, huh. Yeah. I don't like, know why that is. So, so very frustrating. So for the fact that we're doing 200, 30 inch rows, period, is pretty good. But, yeah, last year we push that rock in the ground. Uh, I don't know why it's doing this today, I think, yeah. but I don't, I still don't understand what was causing that last year. It made no sense. So what's causing this issue where we're not able to plant very fast is all these tubes, like that one right there, there's positive pressure in the big seed tanks on the planter. The positive pressure blows the seed to these little mini boxes, little yellow things on each row. When we plant fast, it's not able to blow that seed fast enough to the unit, causing it to create a lower population skips on those middle units. So why it's the middle units, not the end ones, makes no sense to us, but if someone could explain that, that'd be awesome. That button's gonna sticky. Yeah, it's probably better put a new one on before it breaks. Uh, you should have left me a camera so I could have recorded you trying to get your <laughs> thumbnail. <laughs> There's, you're not going to go plant your last row? There's no other row. Yeah, there is. There was like a 60 inch gap. Just a little spot. There. Yeah, I mean, in a small spot. I thought I thought the organic, but you try to fill oh, it in. Right. Behind the trees, or this way in the trees. Can't be very much. Ah, uh, yeah, it's probably just a little bit. Yeah, I'll be fine. Worst comes to worst, so we can get my one row out. Yeah. I don't like these transmissions. No, no one in my family let. Okay, they're just not natural to me. I've run the, run the power shifts for so long. That the I will admit, after planting for an entire season with an IVT, there are certain things I like it for. And there are certain things that I absolutely do not like about it. I don't like stopping, and I don't like going down the road with it. I really despise those two. What it is really nice for is you can set your speed, and then when you get to the ends, you just use a dial. Dial it back well, I don't power. like it's everything's different. It's not if you're used to a power shift, it's just Yeah, you're not you can't feel it's it not, out. Yeah, you gotta come you, back with reverse, you can't flip it. 
Yep. Um, yeah, I just, I'm not, when I react, I don't react the right way. That makes sense? Yeah. But like when you stop, if you don't. I don't think when I do a lot of stuff, I just. Yeah. No, power, I just don't think. I will admit. <laughs> the power shift, you can really, like, you don't have to think at all about it. It's all of this muscle, muscle motions, you know, you're worried about whatever you're doing. IVT, you do have to, at least I do, it sounds like you do too, we have to think a lot more as we're doing it. But, yeah, I'm sure if you grew up with it. Yeah. It's, I'm sure if it's all you ever grow, but it must be a big deal. But if you don't slow down, if you don't stop slow enough in the IBT, it has to recalibrate the transmission every time. Which I'm the type of person where I'm used to, like, grain cart, I'll be in 15th gear going to the trucks, I'll just pop it in neutral yeah. and coast to the trucks. You can't do that with an IBT. No, and I don't think they're durable when you do that either. No, that's a part of the problem. They're not. That's why they have trouble if they're on a manure tanker, isn't it? They come into a field at high speed. Yep, because then you have all the weight pushing you as you're trying, trying to, to slow down. down. Yeah. No, they have their advantages, but I still wish we had power shifts. Or we, for the most part, we still do, but two, two IVTs, this and the 8345. Yeah, I just, I just like there's no benefits to it. It's not a big deal to me. I missed it. <laughs> Broke the window, but <laughs> say now this window will probably rattle for the rest of its last life. Got rid of the mosquito because he flew up the broken window. <laughs> Didn't you break a combine window once by like dropping a, yeah. a finger? Yeah, my brother bought me a metal. That's what they use the metal fingers in the center of the auger, the drum. And I like. I actually put it on the ground, and I just let it. I mean, it was like I dropped it from here, right? Yeah, you, you kind of set it. And I just kind of let it flop down at the very end, caught the window, and... <laughs> so I planted that night with... Or you can combine that night. Combine that night with no window for a while. And the beans are dry and it like hit you. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day, we got some of that window plastic. Oh, yeah. Like we taped it and tried to... Maybe we didn't even heat... I don't know if it was heat shrink type. But it was a day with like 40 mile hour winds. <laughs> so I had to hold my... I had my foot up with them all day long trying to hold the window. Oh, hold the window from going into you? Oh, that's funny. I remember they, they bought... Uh, I think they used some... I think they have... I think that's all they use now, but it, it was... Uh, they used some experimental adhesive that dried in like an hour. It's oh, when they put, when they window put the window in, they're supposed to dry like 12 hours or yep. whatever long it was. So I finally got a window. It was, you just, uh, you don't know how much you missed window. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the window back in, I'm like, boy, this is nice. <laughs> ah. I can't imagine combining without a cab. I can't imagine. They didn't make many combines without them, right? Just kind of like the first 45s and... Oh, there were a lot of them without them, I think. Were there? I think it was until the 60s that they really... Yeah, mid-60s probably were cabs were... Pretty standard, I bet anything before that was... Quite optional. Hmm. Kind of like high boys. I think some guys built, you know, a little plywood platform or something. But, but the problem with the AC or no, no temperatures fan. or fans, I don't know how you, the dust would have just rolled in there too. I don't know. Well, at least it's not like a high boy where you're just breathing in. Oh, the dust. Yeah, dust. Is, yeah, but they, they 24D did. dust. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Green dust is pretty I, bad. I think I'd take the 24D over over 7% beans with a tailwind. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if you can stand it. I don't I heard the other day they were just their eyes, that's all you could see. They were just coated in sure. About 50 foot from the end. Uh, no, 120 foot from the end. We ran out of seed. Okay, this is the organic one. Don't look much different. The 
cars are turned on. Soybeans are done for 2022. So, oh, there's a big drop off. We are gonna go grab the 8410T and the drag, and uh, I'll explain a little bit more what that does when we get over there. Hey, look at that, there's one right there. There's a couple here and there. This is the organic cornfield. I, I didn't say that as he walked in. You can see little rows forming. There they are. Not, not much. I can't get over how slow this is. This is day eight. You can plant corn as fast. It's up. Well, you did drag it too. Yeah, that always makes a difference. There he is. There he is. There he is. Right there. Just drag nicked him a little bit, but he push through anyway. So this drag, basic, how would you even explain a drag? It's just, we'll go see it in a minute here. It's just like, it's just teeth that drags through the ground. Yeah, it's and it just, drag. so basically what its goal is, is it moves enough dirt that it covers the little tiny little weeds. Or it kills them. It kills them in the white root stage. Yeah, when they're just starting to grow. Yeah, once, you, once it gets above the ground, it won't, unless it really, there's one. A lone ranger. <laughs> unless, uh, unless it hits just perfect, it will not kill a weed that's out of the ground. Unless it covers it really good. Yeah, or will, yeah. or will it still not? Ah, no. <laughs> if it's a corn plant, you cover it after it's up, it'll kill it. If it's a weed, it'll probably kill it. <laughs> probably depends on the weed. In fact, this morning when I looked, I, I uncovered it, and there was a little blade of grass that had been buried for what, two days now. And it, can't, it was coming back? Well, I don't know, he was green, he was just, he looked very alive and he'd been under the soil surface for two days, so. You got a couple of rocks here. My part? <laughs> no, really? If I can get this thing one-handed. A little bit of a struggle. Ah, there we go. Is this a 60 footer? Yeah. yeah. So we have a couple of these drags. This is a short tooth drag because the teeth are really short, pretty self-explanatory. And uh, this works really good for before the crops poke up. And then we also have a long tooth drag over there, which works really good for after the crops poke up. You have enough horsepower to pull this thing or? Well, <laughs> gotta chip it. <laughs> The amount of stuff that you accumulate when you start doing organic, it's kind of unreal. I didn't know what a drag was till three years ago. Three or four years ago. Ford 10T is still a fantastic looking tractor. Okay. This is a long tooth drag. Same thing, just the teeth are like 
two foot long, two and a half foot long. But we're actually not gonna drag today. My dad decided that he wanted to wait a few days, even if it does rain a little bit, let the weeds start to grow. So I'm ending here. See you guys in the next one. And thank you for watching. I said that backwards. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.